Hi, I'm Randy Lennon. Welcome to another edition of Meridian Business Television, where business owners access capital. Today joining me is uh, Keith Turner, the President and CEO of Meridian Merchant Capital. And Keith, our question today comes from Jim in Toronto, who is the owner of a company that's doing about $20 million in revenue. They're a distribution company. And uh, despite the fact that he's been profitable, uh, he's looking for some bank financing uh, to do some expansion and uh, he's not getting much traction with his friendly banker. Are there other options? Well, there are a lot of options. And of course, the, the problem for the business owner is he thinks, oh my goodness, now I've got to go and sell a large part of my company, bring in some equity, give up some ownership that I've worked so hard to establish because the bank won't give me this money. Well, banks rent money. And so just because uh, our, our prospect there, our client has got himself a big new contract, say, that he knows he needs capital for, he's thinking, oh goody, now I go to the bank with good news and the bank slaps me down. Well, the bank's worried about one thing. They call it overtrading. He calls it a growth opportunity. They're worried he doesn't have enough actual equity underneath their debt to support the business if something should go a little bit awry. So they're looking at it as a challenge, whereas he's looking at it as an opportunity. Now you were a banker. Right? I was a I was a lending banker, sat on credit committees for over 15 years. Yes. So why is it that um, he's been profitable? He's been doing the 20 million, maybe, and we don't know the details of this case. Right. But let's say that this is going to bring his sales up to 30, 40 million, right. and he, like you say, he's excited. But why is it that the banks wouldn't want to support him? Uh, it's all about risk, I guess. Well, it is so, and that's exactly right. But they do want to support him. And in fact, a lot of these situations, we are the bank's good friend as well as the client's good friend because the bank doesn't want to lose the relationship. It just wants to manage its risk. So really what they want to have is some piece of capital that kind of emulates some outside equity, some kind of more patient or more entrepreneurial debt that they can subordinate to their interests. So for example, now let's explain say... explain what you mean by that, subordinated debt. It means that the first claim on the assets of the company go to the bank. Okay. So the they, second they claim, stay in. Yeah. The bank stays in, the second claim goes to our new friends, let's call it Mr. Mezzanine Financier. Okay. And that mezzanine group is going to come in for a certain portion of that capital in such a way that the bank is able to come up with the rest. And what the bank focuses on, apart from its ratios, which is a big I mean, it's a topic all of its own, but let's say they're focused on the debt to equity ratio. They right. do not want to see their customer have more than, say, two to two and a half times the debt to the actual equity that's on the, in the company and on their financial statements. So adding $10 million pushes them over the edge. Right. Now, if somebody comes along with $5 million of mezzanine financing, subordinated debt, the bank looks at that like, oh, he came in with five million dollars of new equity. So Even though it's not equity, because it's that, that uh, debt is behind the bank, the bank will consider it like... They'll add that five million dollars to the equity that's on the bank statements and they'll look and if it meets a ratio, they'll turn around to their, their client with a big sigh of relief and say, we'll give you the other five or six or seven million dollars if that mezzanine group comes in with the three million dollars. Now why the mezzanine group would do this without their having the assets is that extra cash that's coming from the brand new contract makes them feel comfortable that they're going to be able to service their debt, which is going to be more expensive Mm -hmm. But and they're also concerned that if something did go wrong, of course the bank will claim the assets and they'll end up with probably nothing. So they're going to focus on just how solid is that contract, just how good is, is the gentleman in Toronto at his business that he can execute on a contract that's maybe going to double his size. Right. So they're going to focus on the risks of scaling, whereas the banks are going to are, are going to focus on the risk of the over trading aspect. From Jim's perspective. He has a choice. He could sell part of his company to get the money to expand and basically give up a big piece of his company. Or he could take on what is essentially going to be slightly higher cost or in some cases sub substantially higher cost sub debt or mezzanine debt. But it still will be less costly to him than actually selling equity. Especially so now as his business is going to be worth more with a major new contract. Right. This is not the time to be selling the silver. Right. Well, thank you, Keith. Keith Turner from Meridian Merchant Capital. Uh, Jim out there, if, uh, if all we've done is confuse you and you want to talk to Keith about how you actually do this, or if someone else out there is in a similar situation, you're a relatively good-sized established company and you've got growth opportunities and the bank has turned you down, 
you might want to get a hold of Keith at uh, Meridian Merchant Capital. Uh, the website is meridianmerchantcapital.com. And thanks again for watching Meridian Business Television. I'm Randy Lennon.